please pause this video and watch the video that has been posted to Blackboard under this learning objective. It does a fabulous job explaining the balance scorecard. The authors of the balance scorecard stated, what you measure is what you get. Senior management is very aware that what they choose to measure will affect the behavior of their managers as well as employees. Financial measures such as variance analysis and return on investment are useful tools for evaluating performance. However, many companies now supplement these financial measures with non-financial measures to better assess performance and anticipate future results. Most companies recognize that both financial and non-financial measures can provide useful insight into what is happening in the company. As a result, many companies now use a broad-based measurement approach called the balanced scorecard to evaluate performance. Nearly 50% of the largest companies in the United States are using the balanced scorecard approach. The balanced scorecard evaluates companies' performance from a series of perspectives. The four most common perspectives are financial, customer, internal process, and learning and growth. The balanced scorecard incorporates both financial and non-financial measures in an integrated system that links performance measurement with a company's strategic goals. The financial perspective is the most traditional view of the company. It employs financial measures of performance used by most firms. The customer perspective evaluates the company from the viewpoint of those people who buy its products and services. This view compares the company to its competitors in terms of price, quality, product innovation, customer service, and other dimensions. The internal process perspective evaluates the internal operating processes critical to success. All critical aspects of the value chain, including product development, production, delivery, and after-sales service, are evaluated to ensure that the company is operating effectively and efficiently. The learning and growth perspective evaluates how well the company develops and retains its employees. This would include evaluation of employee skills, employee satisfaction, and training programs. Within each perspective, the balanced scorecard identifies objectives that contribute to attainment of strategic goals. This image shows examples of objectives within each perspective. The objectives are linked across perspectives in order to tie performance measurement to company goals. The financial perspective objectives are normally set first, and that objectives are set in the other perspectives in order to accomplish the financial goals. If Southwest wants to increase profits by lowering cost and generating revenue, they will need to increase customer satisfaction. Their customer perspective objectives are on-time flights and lowest prices. In order for Southwest to offer lowest prices and timely flights, they need to improve internal operations. Their internal process perspective objective is fast turnarounds. Finally, in order to increase fast turnaround, their employees must possess knowledge. Their learning and growth perspective objective is ground crew alignment. Each objective contains a few metrics to determine if they met their targets or initiatives. In summary, the balanced scorecard does the following. Employs both financial and non-financial measures. Creates linkage so that high-level corporate goals can be communicated all the way down to the shop floor. Provides measurable objectives for such non-financial measures as product quality, and integrates all the company's goals into a single performance measurement system so that an inappropriate amount of weight will not be placed on any single goal. The solution to this exercise will be provided in the next video.